Hi, everyone. My name is Sarah Blakemore. I am the coach of the UT undergraduate moot court team. And in this video, I am going to talk about online resources for research on moot court cases and getting started when you don't have any experience with moot court. So first, I want to say that starting out when you've never seen moot court cases or uh, even Supreme Court cases, it can be really hard. There is a big learning curve associated with moot court and the legal system in general. And it can be daunting, but we're here to help you. So please don't hesitate to ask any questions to our team. Uh, we'd be happy to assist you in kind of learning all this new terminology. So terminology for moot court cases is probably one of the biggest things that we see a learning curve with. And it can be fairly inaccessible for beginners when you're just starting out reading cases. So don't be discouraged. This obviously comes with a learning curve and the way neuroplasticity works, it's quite incredible. It, you, when you dedicate a lot of brain activity to certain things, it can be really hard at first. And then once your brain gets normalized in doing that kind of stuff, uh, doing this kind of research, it studies show that it goes from a higher point of knowledge in your brain to a lower point of knowledge. And so it becomes a lot easier. So I put a little thing of a learning curve here so you can see basically how it works. Um, just the more you engage with topics like this, the more easier it will become to work and study moot court cases. The first thing that is probably the most daunting for most people is the legalese. Uh, legalese is just a fancy word for the terminology that comes with legal cases. So the first thing I want to recommend is when you're reading a case and you don't understand a word, you should stop and look that word up, write down the definition before you continue. Because, and usually I, when I'm reading kind of literature or things like that, I want to read the whole page and then go on. But these kinds of terminology that you don't understand are usually trigger words for different sorts of um, legal knowledge. And they can be really, really important and kind of make or break your uh, understanding of a case. So like I said, you wanna stop before you, um, before you continue on with the case. I've linked two uh, resources down here. One is the Cornell Legal Encyclopedia and the other one is the Federal Judici Judiciary Glossary. Both have a lot of legal terms. The Cornell Legal Encyclopedia is a bit more advanced than the Federal Judiciary Glossary. The Federal Judiciary Glossary was made for people who are on civil or criminal juries. And so it has a little bit more accessible language, but you might wanna look up both and write down what you learn so that you can keep it for future cases that you see. So when you look up a case just online, you put it into Google, um, I put this <laughs> I put this image here thinking that there was going to be kind of a weird way that this case would show up on the internet, but I search up Oye all the time. In fact, I have it bookmarked on my, uh, on my browser. So that's the first thing that comes up for me if, if I search up McCulloch versus Maryland, which is a pretty famous uh, case in the Supreme Court. So the first things that will come up are Oye. You can see that it has a link to Google Scholar that will show up more cases like that. And that usually links to the Library of Congress or Hustia. And when you, I really like to start with a basic Google search because in these people also ask section, it has a lot of really good questions about the main issues that are confronted in a case that you can look at before you even start reading the case. So Wikipedia is always the first thing that will come up on your computer, at least for me it is. And Wikipedia is a really good 
uh, resource all for background and history, which are both really relevant when you're studying moot court cases, but they don't have the best analysis, especially for our purposes. We kind of have to go into dive deeper than Wikipedia provides, but it's a really good place to start if you have no idea about the case or anything that's discussed in the case, because of course Wikipedia has links on uh, terms that you may not know. So that's a really good place to start. And moving on to Oye. Oye is, will definitely be the top result. And this re resource is one of my favorites. In fact, they have like a outline of all the cases that they that are Supreme Court cases. I think every single Supreme Court case is on here. Some of them have full outlines and some of them don't on Oye. So if it's not on Oye, that kind of is not the best thing. It's you probably understand that that's not the case that you should be starting with when you're just first starting your uh, research from the case problem. Mm -hmm. But the way that the OEA outlines go is it's in a br case brief format, which is really helpful. So it has the first thing you'll see is the background associated with the case, which is just the facts of the record and why that case was able to come up through the appeals process. And one thing that I really love about this is it does show lower court decisions. It talks about how, how, like how and why people made constitutional questions about specific cases and how it dis, how it ascended through the appeals system in the background section. It has the constitutional question that's being addressed by the court. And then it has a little graphic that shows each of the justices that were on the court at the time, which is really helpful in their votes and who won, of course, in the case. And then it has a very short conclusion about the opinion, the majority opinion, and sometimes the dissenting opinion in the case, especially if the dissenting opinion is something that has led to kind of uh, advancements, I guess, in the jurisprudence. So you want to make sure that you read that. And it, it also has, this is why I love it so much. I'm an auditory learner. And so it has the oral arguments. It always has recordings of oral arguments past probably like the 1960s. And it for the cases that are especially famous, it has opinion announcements. Opinion announcements are also a really good place to start because it's a recording of the justices giving a speech on why they announced that, um, on why they like announced that specific opinion. And it also has the dissents if it's a really big case. So this kind of like speech format is a lot more accessible if you're going to, uh, before you like take deep dives into these cases. And it's just a speech of the justice trying to explain in a more uh, non-legal definitions of why they, uh, they chose to make a decision in that case. The next thing, a uh, resource that I think is the most important is Hustia. Hustia, I say, is the big kid version of Oye. They're actually run by the same people. So it has, on Oye, it actually has links to Hustia. It will say on the side, like syllabus or view case, and those are links to Hustia. Hustia is really important because it has basically all of the text of the opinions as well as the dissents as well as the syllabus in the case. And for the purposes of moot court, if you ever look at an old case problem, you'll see that the on the last page is where all the cases are listed and they have links to Hustia on there because that is where you're going to be pulling quotes from. You cannot pull quotes for the purposes of moot court from the oral arguments. You can only pull quotes from the opinions. And so it has the text of the opinions there in Hustia. And the third resource, which is still, it's kind of on the same level as OEA, but a little bit more in depth. It shows famous uh, Supreme Court decisions and it has, um, it will explain the decision in the case. And then we'll have at the bottom, it has a section of the concepts that are in the case and then links to explanations of, of those concepts. So it's really helpful when you are starting out and not 
and not really understanding what the kind of background for the law in that case. So Cornell, I have it linked. I have all these things linked. And this, uh, this PowerPoint is going to be linked in the description of this video so you can access all the links. The next thing is, of course, cases that are newer are always going to be more easy to research because the internet and people can publish things on these cases now that we have the internet. So SCOTUS blog is one of them. I really like SCOTUS blog. It has a, it lists all the briefs and the, um, the briefs, petitions, opinions, amicus briefs. Amicus briefs are briefs that are not put in by the, the, by the um, advocates themselves, the lawyers who are arguing those cases. Amicus briefs are really a pop, have become more popular in later years. And if it's a really big case, there will probably be a lot of amicus briefs, like briefs from the ACLU. And it's just an explanation of the case and how uh, these are submitted before the cases are decided. And it's different third parties weighing in on how they want the case to be decided. And the second resource is the American Bar Association preview archives. So these have little, these have basically the same thing as OEA, except they're a lot more in depth. The kind of brief description of the cases, it goes background question um, and the decision as well as dissents. And these can be accessed since 2005. There's a link um, and it's only for Imp like really important cases that the Supreme Court is dealing with that term. So if it's not, if it's not a case that probably has an opinion announcement or it's something that's been in the news, it probably won't be on this preview archives, but it's good to check for cases on the preview archives if they are recent decisions. Online databases, you can access these through uh, the UT library system or the Texas A&M library system if you are an Aggie. The ones that I really like and have linked, well, I haven't linked any of these because you have to access them through your library system, are Hain Online. Hain Online has a lot of things from opinions in the cases. I'll have like the periodicals that the Supreme Court submits on each case. And it will also have law review articles that pertain to cases or concepts. So in Hain Online, you can look up the case name itself, or you can look up a legal concept and it will come up with a lot of different resources on this legal concept. The same thing applies to Nexus Uni. It has opinions and law brief articles, which are really helpful. Academic Search Complete, you probably have used this before. It has a lot of articles as well. And then one resource that I frequently use because I like to be able to print out cases and highlight quotes directly on them is the Library of Congress. It has the case syllabi and the opinions. The syllabi is really considered like the short version of the opinion. And it's got a lot more condensed information on the opinion. And this, the Library of Congress is of course public access. You can just search up, uh, I think it's loc.gov and you can type in a case and it will come up with different articles, but if you're looking specifically for the case syllabi, it will be listed as a periodical from the Supreme Court. You can use the filters to narrow down the results on Library of Congress. And of course you can use filters to narrow down the results on any of these Hain Online and Nexus Uni academic search complete stuff. You probably don't wanna be reading any resources that are not peer reviewed. So that's a good way to narrow it down. Um, I, like I said before, I'm an auditory learner, and so these are just additional resources that you can use if you're a visual or an auditory learner. Um, YouTube is always a great resource for everything. That's why we have this channel. Um, there are case, like video case briefs that are made by Quimby for a lot of different cases. They don't have the full uh, we don't have full access because Quimby is a paid service, but it has the like whole background and the lower court decisions on each of the on a lot of the Supreme Court cases. C-SPAN for my visual learners, you can just look up C-SPAN. It's a government um, like version of probably like television. 
So they have C-SPAN MOOC, they have uh, C-SPAN SCOTUS actually. So they have documentaries with commentary on the cases. And these are really great for really important cases. And they have legal scholars on there, which is really helpful. Uh, you, can you can watch these and they have them in, in a lot more accessible format. So this is not really a resource that like a lawyer would use to research a case, but it has more kind of like public, publicly accessible information on the cases. If you go into your podcast app on your phone, there's different podcasts as well that uh, the ones that I like specifically are the Federalist Society. They have like these call-ins where they have the judges and then they'll have different lawyers, not the judges, the advocates, and they'll have different lawyers who weigh on, in on these types of cases. And those can be really helpful if you, you could probably search up legal concepts or the, um, or the case itself in the, uh, on FedSoc and we the people, same thing goes for them. They have a lot of kind of legal history, which is really wonderful. And if you want to kind of passively take in this knowledge, I listen to these podcasts and the oral arguments, honestly, when I'm like taking walks before and after school. So that's a really great way and a place to get started. So if you have any more questions, you can reach out and email us or text us in Slack. And uh, this is me signing off for now. Hook them.